So the cuts that I wound up with are the back here, and that's 17 and a quarter by 28 inches. Just one of those, of course. Down here, I've got the top and the bottom, and that was 22 and a half by 15 and three quarters. And then the two sides are 28 by 22 and a half inches. And two of those, of course. So the top and bottom pieces need the most holes put in them uh, with the jig here. So I actually need three sides. So both sides and then the back have to have these holes drilled. So I'm going to just stick it in this jig here. I like this Craig pocket hole jig a lot. It has uh, really come in handy. So I'm only putting uh, four holes in this. I figure with the uh, wood glue that should be plenty to keep this together. So I'm going to go along both the uh, top and bottom here on three sides and I'll come back whenever that's done. Now moving on to the two sides. All I need is pocket holes on the back side here. So I'm going to get those put in. Yeah. And just like uh, with the other piece, I'm just putting four good pocket holes in here. And once I get both of these sides done, I will move on and show you the next step. Time to get this thing together. So I learned quickly that uh, when you put pocket hole screws in, uh, it wants to separate the wood a little bit as far as shift it out. So um, it's really helpful to have clamps on here. So that's what I'm gonna do. The first thing I've got is a little bit of this wood glue. And I've been putting these on every one of the um, joints here. Just a little bit. Okay. So this one's going to go flat down here. And this guy is going to be up against it. And then I'm going to lock it down with the clamps here, making sure that it's nice and flush it's on all different sides here. This clamp is still really stiff since it's new. Second, get this one on. Someday I hope to have some better woodworking tools in my workshop, but that day is not necessarily today. Okay, so those are both connected. I want to make sure everything is flush here. After what seems like an eternity, I got these clamps positioned right. I'm just going to get these pocket screws put in here. Okay. Alright, I'm going to go along here and get the rest of these put in. So the bottom drawer that um, goes in the cabinet that was just built have five pieces of wood here. One that is 13 and a quarter by 10. I have a 17 and an eighth by 12. That's the front piece. Uh, this first one was the back. I have two side pieces, 21 by 10. Then the uh, bottom here is 21 by 14 and three quarter. So let's get those pieces put together now. So as far as holes go, I'm gonna put three um, on the bottom and side of the side pieces. And then for the back, I'm going to do three on three sides. 
and on the bottom it just needs uh, three towards the front. So what I'm finding to be helpful is placing it on here where I want it and then marking it with a pencil. So I'm not doing any real guesswork. So I'm just gonna line up where I think's the middle and then measure it out. One and a quarter, one and a quarter. Just like that. And once it's placed, I'm just kind of going over this with a pencil so I know uh, where I'm going to be setting this down once I've got the glue on it. I don't know, it just kind of helps me understand what's going on here. <clears throat> I think the more I work with wood like this, the more I'll, uh, the more practice I need, the more, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so now I can just use the wood glue and put it in here. And just plop this back into place. Anyway, and also whenever I um, cinch this down with the screws, I'll know that uh, it's in the right spot and hasn't bowed out any. So I accidentally put the wrong side of the plywood on the outside here for the drawer. But I'll just have to use lots of paint, or maybe some putty. Okay, so I found that it's kind of tedious to get these uh, drawer pulls, not pulls, but the slides here, to get these installed, because they're so uh, picky. But what I found is if I use this piece of foam for the bottom one, it gets it up off the bottom. Uh, enough to make this rather enjoyable. So first thing I'm going to do is open these and there's a little black lever in here that I pull and it separates um, this piece from this. So this one is going to go inside here and shh, well, be quiet. Somewhere around two millimeters from the edge of the door here and I've marked a line where the top of the shelf is so I'm just going to come down a little bit and then install this with some screws here. So there's probably tons of ways you can install these but I'll show you what I have found to work so far because I've already installed the two for the other um, cabinet here. So what I'm going to do is I've got that line drawn here so I'm going to bring this in about two millimeters from the edge. Come down, actually I'm gonna come down about right here. And I've got my, it's okay to let the backside fall for a second, just to get one uh, screw started here. Sorry for the poor angles. My parents' workshop here is just crowded until Ashley and I move our stuff out. You know how it goes. Okay, so the first one's in there. Now what I'm gonna do is raise this up and I want to make sure that it's the same distance from the bottom each time. So I'm gonna take my tape measure here and that's where it gets awkward. So I'm gonna look at the bottom of the slide here where my screw is, and I see that it's nine and a quarter. So I'm gonna come, actually the, the bottom is, uh, excuse me, eight and a quarter. So I'm gonna go to the back over here with a pencil and mark that spot. 
and line this slide up um, to that point. So coming back here, eight and a quarter. Okay. So that should be the bottom position for the slide. So load up my screwdriver here. I'm probably gonna block your view again, but I'm sorry about that. So find where it needs to be and okay get that screw started here and uh, with any luck these will be pretty well level here I'm gonna go back and make sure once they're tight Bottoms eight and a quarter, eight and a half. <laughs> so I'm going to spend a little bit more time not on the camera and get this backside drop down a quarter of an inch. Sorry about that. Went ahead and got both of those slides in there. So now I'm going to pick up the drawer and get this in here. Perfect fit. I like that. Okay, so now I need to figure out how to get these other slides here to the exact spot they need to be to line up with that other uh, bar there. So what I'm going to do is use my pencil on the side over here and I'm going to try to match up the middle as best I can just from eyeballing it. Um, I can actually pull one of these slides out just a hair to help me um, see exactly where it needs to be. But what we're going to do is use um, the holes on this thing. There's some that are uh, horizontal and vertical and those allow you to um, pick the middle and then move up or down depending on uh, which way you need to go to correct um, not being right in the center. So it kind of makes it a little bit easier. Um, not as much guesswork. Taking a look here, I can use my tape measure and find out that I made a mark at 1 16th, or uh, 2 and 1 16th down from uh, the top. So I'm gonna come back here towards the end and make that same mark. Okay, so this needs to be in the center and needs to be, uh, let's see how far away that is. That's basically a quarter away from the end down there. So now I'm just gonna take a screw and put it into the middle of this vertical here. Now, go down here to the end and make sure my middle piece is where it needs to be. Now I'm just going to screw this one in as well. Now even though I only have one bar on so far, I'm going to pull this up here and just see how that's going to connect, if it's going to be the right spot or not. So I can see now that yes, that will work just fine. So, I'll go ahead and install the other one on the other side, and we'll see how well it works. Okay, 
everything is done hopefully it will slide together nicely now Let's see if I can get things lined up maybe here we go there's one click all right well there we have it extends all the way out quite nicely and then when you close it has a satisfying lock in there. So the plywood edges are not very pretty and really hard to paint, or so I'm told. So I found this product called uh, Melamine. It's a glue on uh, the back, well it's an iron on. So it's got glue on the back and it's heat activated. So you just measure out with a little bit of excess here on your product. You just tear it off. It's kind of like paper. So then you match it up and simply apply your iron to it here. And it gives this a really nice um, finish and it's paintable. So when I go to paint this whole thing white, uh, it'll just make it uh, nice and easy because that plywood would try to uh, soak up all the paint real quick and make it difficult. So uh, This iron is set on the cotton setting, which is what the package recommended. So This is supposed to just get all the glue pushed in there. And then you come back with something like this stick here and just make sure it's pushed in. So once the glue is set, you let it cool for a moment. I'm going to use this razor knife to uh, trim off the edges because I don't have one of those uh, wheeled rollers just trims the edges real quick, but good enough for now. So I found this stuff either at Lowe's or Amazon. Amazon had 50 foot for like $16. So you can go check that out. I guess I'll put a link for that in the description so you can get some if you need it. But uh, the three quarter is just ever so slightly too big. Um, so I just come back here and just trim it off a little bit. I say you can use a file too, but there we go. So I'm going to go around uh, all the drawers and all the insides and all that. I'll probably leave the bottoms down here uh, without, but I'm going to get this uh, ready for painting. <clears throat> now that I have all those edges on here, uh, Ashley wants this desk to be white. So I figured I would uh, go ahead and get some painting done. Nothing like watching somebody paint, right? So I think I'll stop here and uh, show you what it looks like whenever it's done. Oh, but this is a uh, white paint and primer all in one. Now to the point where I need to install the drawer pulls. I found these, uh, I think they were on Amazon, for, uh, there's 10 of them for about $12. So. They're not uh, expensive, but they'll do just fine. So the gap between each of these posts is three inches. So what I want to do is find the middle here and then go off an inch and a half in each direction so I can get this handle put on. So I've already marked the uh, middle from side to side and up and down. And what I want to do is simply take my tape measure here and measure out half an inch uh, on both sides here. I mean, sorry, an inch and a half. And mark that. 
both. Now, it's probably hard to see that, but now I'm going to come back and make sure that this is still the uh, same height here. So, I've got six and a quarter, six and a quarter, and that one's actually just a little bit high. Okay, so now I'm going to drill the holes for this handle. Let's see how well I did here, getting these matched up to the appropriate holes here. Yeah, seems pretty good. Uh, where's my screwdriver? So now it's just a simple matter of uh, getting these screws tightened down here. Three quarter was almost too thick for these things. Very nice. That's really on there now. Well, fast forward several months. I have the uh, base here complete and um, I just pulled all the knobs off to uh, paint the front again I uh, actually wanted it to be more of a shiny paint so that's what she's getting now I'm gonna cut the back leg here and it needs to be the same height as each of these um, filing cabinet pieces which just happens to be 28 inches so what I'm gonna do here is get this marked out at 28 inches here. And I've got two of them to make a four by four. So I made a leg for the desk. It's just uh, two two by fours screwed together and painted white, of course. Now to attach them, I've decided to use pocket holes for uh, the leg here and then just uh, screw some more uh, screws into this spot here to attach to the table top. So, and of course, I have to transport this, so I'm going to put these in here and then uh, put these in later on. So, But that's the idea that I had. So the desk is inside now, and to keep the pieces together, I've decided to use these 2x4s with several holes and uh, just got these two pieces um, screwed together. So hopefully that will be enough. If for some reason this flexes, I will install some longer boards here in the middle. Well, Ashley's desk is finally done. I've been working on this thing for several months. So let me show you the finished product here. So the top I painted um, with a gloss, a high gloss, and it's actually really smooth. And then I was able to get this leg put in under here um, using pocket screws and uh, works very well. Now, I did not paint this a second time with that high gloss, so I could probably use some of that. Now, the drawers, I thought, turned out very well. So they open all the way to the end there, and then they lock, and they, uh, they actually look real nice along the side there. Now, uh, this one is the only one I really messed up on, because I turn this piece in the wrong direction. Should have used uh, this one in here, but that's all right. And then I went ahead and added these blocks up under here to um, anchor this down so it wouldn't slide around any. And then of course those are holding everything together up under there. So looking pretty good. Thank you for watching this video. This exact same desk on Pottery Barn was $1,200, and I was able to complete it for $250, so saved $1,000, and uh, actually the way I built it, it's uh, bigger. So uh, on Pottery Barn, the cabinets were actually here, 
and here, and this was only two feet. So you're looking to cut it about there. So that's all the room you had for uh, your chair. So much bigger. I think Ashley's going to be much happier with that uh, extra room. Thanks for watching. I'm Seth Johnson with Land the House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.